Well, we've got little Intima that's come and seen and said hello. And first we got here, we thought there was nothing to be seen, but they were around the back. And now Intima's come to investigate when she heard the car, she came round. And our little one is right at the top of the mound and king of the castle. See it there? Just hiding in amongst the thicket. How cute is that? That is as cute as it gets, I can tell you. And you can see Intima's making her way up that way. Hopefully they're going to have a bit of a game. Maybe now that we've just arrived, there will be a bit of sort of interaction and a bit of waking up. I think they're th hoping that maybe the adults are back. I don't see any of the adults at this stage. I think that these two have been playing around on the top of the mound, and that's why we didn't see them when they were around the back. And Intima is very, very curious. She kind of came around the mound, came and checked us out for a little bit, and then now back onto this area and back to the chewing on some sticks and I believe a lot of you are very excited to see the hyenas it's always good to see them now hopefully the mothers will come back because we don't like to spend time at the den without the mothers it means that or an adult of some sort just in case something arrives and follows us towards this area and then causes a bit of an issue for the little ones so that's why we don't spend too much time without the adults now Alison you say and Tima is so cute she is very cute she seems to be by the day becoming more bold with us and she's been chewing on the tires recently and seems to always come and kind of have a look and see what's going on the little one not so much is still a bit unsure of this big hunk of metal that kind of chunk sorry not hunk i don't know why i said that um big chunk of metal that comes around and kind of moves and goes into this area so it's curled itself up on the top have you been playing today is that why you tired is that not the tired face of a Oh no, it's all too much. Saturday afternoon nap before the big night out. There we go. And you can see the little spots just starting to show through now. And it's trying to have a nap, but Indeem is crunching down on what appears to be a stick or a bone. I can't see nicely what it is. And that's keeping her awake a little bit. Is that a bone or a stick, Seb? I can't see. It looks like a stick. It I don't think that is a bone, just given the shape of it. You can see it's almost a hollowed out section. Now, April, you were wondering what they are chewing on, so I'm not 100% sure. It might actually be a bone. It's got a bit of a white edge to it, but I don't think so. It doesn't look bone-like, does it? Maybe uh, it is. Yeah, maybe under the right paw is the other section of it. It could be a bone. I would be surprised if it was a stick and was being chewed with such relish. It's, you know, sticks, they'll chew them for a little bit and then leave them, but it looks like it's actually consuming whatever that is, so I'd imagine it must be a bone. Now that it's turned, we'll probably get a bit of a better view of what it is. But you can see, even at this age, those, bo those jaws are incredibly powerful. And I think it is a bone. See how clever she is already. She already knows how to use her foot to pin that bone down to then be able to crunch down on it. There we go. Don't get that stuck in your throat now. I have seen that with hyenas too. They're such gluttons that sometimes they do do this. And well, there it goes. The whole thing down. No, no. It's coming back again. And like I say, this is what happens sometimes, is that they crunch them down and swallow them, and then it gets stuck a little bit, and then they have to actually get sick to get it out. There you go. See? Just like that. <laughs> there it comes back up again. You have to break it down more. You, there we go. You can't swallow all of that. It's too big. No, it's not going down. <laughs> this is there. Did you get it down? Wow. Well done. Now you can imagine the constitution to, of that stomach to be able to try and actually digest that, what has just been swallowed. I mean, that was a whole chunk. No, it's back out again. Look. Or is that a different piece uh, now? Must be a different piece of bone, but to swallow such a big chunk, you're a little glutton, Intima. You must be careful that that doesn't get stuck in your throat and cause some damage. But like I said, it's amazing to me that they're actually able, well, they're able to digest that and process that bone as big as shard as that all the way through, and that doesn't affect their stomach or their intestines in any way. 
and we know that bones are generally quite sharp so you can imagine how uncomfortable it must be once it goes down so hyenas are another story yes we're talking about you that's a little face of innocence isn't it except that they're not so innocent these guys they quite naughty shame the little one is just curled up on top He's really kind of I think envious in a way that Ntima is getting something to chew on that little one is nowhere near ready to be breaking down bones of that size in fact it won't have the jaw power yet to even crunch through that you will find that it will go pick it up and play with it a little bit just out of curiosity and from watching Ntima going through it but it's definitely not big enough to crunch down on bones and will still be very reliant on milk isn't that nice with the colors in the background as well this den is spectacular it's one of the most beautiful places to spend time the angle of the sun in the morning and the afternoon is pretty good so it's a nice scenic den a bit more so than the den of Philemon's cut line I think what do you think Seb? No, I agree. Yeah. Yes. yes so John, I don't know if I got this correct. I, you're asking about hyenas, what they're related to. I didn't get the most of it because, well, yes, comms are being a pain today. Bears. So, no, they're not related to bears in any way. The, the hyenas are in their own family altogether. They are part of the hyena day family. There is no relation to bears. They're not related to dogs. They, in fact, probably the the closest relation that they can come to is cats funny enough which is really quite strange and that's why they're young off referred to as cubs and not pups but they're in their own family altogether hyena day is just a completely separate grouping but isn't this little one cute even the grass is too much are you coming to say hello yes here we go mischief is on its way mischief one and two Okay, here we go. Here comes Naughty. Are you going to... You're not allowed to chew the tires. I, we've spoken about this before. Yes, I, you know not to come chew tires. Don't be naughty. So, take care. You're asking why do they tend to chew the tires? Is there any other animal that does this? Well, I've seen the wild dogs do it from time to time, but I think it's just the curious nature of hyenas. They just like to kind of come and see what's going on. And then they bite the tire, and the tire is fairly soft, and it's like a puppy. When it's got a chew toy, if the softer it is, the more they like to bite down on it, particularly when they're teething. Remember, a lot of these hyenas are younger, and they tend to teeth when we're around, and so they come and bite the tire, and it just helps to ease with the teething process. Are you also becoming curious? Oh, lost our nerve a little bit. No, not sure about this thing. We have to wait until the older sibling in Tima comes in to be able to be sure of what's going on. Is that not the cutest little thing? Yes, you are so cute. I wonder what's going through its mind. Hyena dens have got to be some probably one of my favorite things as a guide in all the years and and the reason why i say it is because generally hyenas have such a bad reputation and people come with this sort of preconceived idea of what a hyena is what it does that it's a nasty dirty horrible animal and dens always help to dispel a lot of those myths and to show the softer side of hyenas and really endear them to people and so a den for me is one of the best, best places to bring people and, and to change this sort of misconception about them and the way that they actually move around and what they actually do because everyone always thinks that they're these killing machines that kill everything and are disgusting and have a bad sort of feeling about them and actually that's not the case at all. Hyenas are incredibly intelligent animals, socially are highly sort of developed. They're also animals that are very caring for one another and the den sites themselves show that softer side and who can't think that that little one over there and even in Tima are not the cutest little things ever and the thing about hyenas other the other side of a den is that it's generally quite interactive and I say interactive and 
in a way that they come and they sort of look at the vehicles and they almost scan everybody and they go past sort of part become part of the experience a lot more than something like a lion or a leopard just that completely ignores us hyenas generally take quite a lot of interest in what we do and so it's a lot more engaging for people when they come on a safari to see hyenas like this and why that den is very very important oh be nice Now it is starting to get quite dark, so I don't want to be here at night without the adults. I'm gonna. Pr oh, are you? Why are you being biting? No, don't bite it. Unfortunately, when you're a sibling and you're younger, you're going to get bullied. That's just part and parcel of life, particularly when there's only the two of them. So this team is going to bully this little one quite a bit. It's just unfortunately how things work. It's not ideal, but Intima will learn in time, and and she'll get sort of over it when she gets older and, and the little one once it gets stronger will be able to help sort of fight back and be able to push back a little bit so Francis from Israel you're wondering if the older cubs are protective of the younger ones no not really you'll find a situation with the older cubs is that they will be just as scared as that little one and probably try and run into the den as fast as possible to seek shelter much like the little one would do as well so they're not actually very protective of those little ones the, however once they make a noise the adults will come flying here and will really try to push them out and try to make sure that whatever is threatening their cubs is taken care of so the adults hear what's going on and they come in very quickly to sort things out so you have a situation where the cubs not so much they don't really look after one another but adults definitely would what are you doing? Have you decided that's where you're going to nap now, in the grass? You can see just how little that is. And the length of the grass is far taller than what it is. Must be such an interesting world. Now John, you were saying you wonder what they think when they see humans. And I'm not sure, it must be interesting just kind of, they're very intelligent animals and they're able to work out what's going on. So. I'm not 100% sure what they kind of feel and how they actually see us, but at the end of the day, I think the vehicle is something intriguing. They're curious animals. They like to investigate, and the only way they can do that is with their mouth. So a lot of the time, they sit and they're just analyzing, just checking where they can come and bite down and see and test out what this object is and whether or not it's something that they need to be nervous of. Now, Paula, are you wondering how old are they when they get their spots? Well, you can see this little one is getting its spots already, and this little one cannot be more than three months old so they start to get their spots it's a little bit different for each one and we saw when Tima had a sibling that the one was far more spotty than the other to start with so you'll find that they get their spots at different times but generally around three months we start to see the first stop spots around the neck area and by the time it's six months which is in Tima you can see that they're pretty much spotty all over and that their legs themselves are starting to get spotted and lose that darkness as well so that little one, you see the little spots on the neck? There we go. Starting. You're quite brave, little one, for such a small... It's very cute, this, and very timid. I'm not sure it knows what to do. I think it wants the parents to come home so it can have a good suckle before it goes to bed for the night. Remember that these hyenas will be put into their den. When mom comes back, she'll chase them back in and make sure at night that they stay in there. And these little hyenas also know that at night, it's better for them to be in rather than out because lots of predators are around. And that little one is a snack for even something like an owl. So you can't spend too much time. Owls would come in and even potentially take them. And during the day, they actually have to worry about quite a few bird predators as well. I know wild dog puppies often get taken by martial eagles, and the same would be with hyena young as well you've still got very bandy legs long legs for a little one see look it's actually scent marking well it's trying to it's not got it down right yet but they have a little gland underneath their eye that they can rub up on grass and it's almost trying to do that you haven't got it quite right little one 
And you'll find a situation where these guys will also do what's called pasting. Now that's pretty much how hyenas mark most of the time is they've got a little gland that sits underneath the anus that produces a paste and they'll walk up to a grass and they'll kind of just paste on it and that will leave a scent for all the other hyenas that come past. You're still very wobbly. Aaron, you're asking why the spotted hyena is in a separate genus to the brown and the stripes. Aaron, I'm actually not 100% sure. It's not something that I've actually thought about too much, and it's probably I should pay more attention to it. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure at all. I'll have to try and research and to see why. It might be something to do with their f sort of clan structure. You'll find that the striped and the brown hyena are very seldom in big groupings like the spotted hyena. They don't form these massive social groups. They tend to be loners a lot of the time or in a pair when they're mating but very seldom will you see them in big clans of 50 60 of them like you see with the spotted hyenas so it might be something to do with that but i don't actually know for sure i wonder if maybe it's be nice to it and Tima. there we go how's that little rub up just to make sure you say hello they are very cute So, Kristen, you're wondering if the cubs will treat each other in order of the status of their mother in the clan. Most definitely. So you'll find the... And the reason why is because they get s stronger if they are higher-ranking cubs from a higher-ranking female. They get first access to food, which means that they generally get bulkier and stronger and bigger and therefore can dominate the others. And that's why there is this situation where they will push them around and it will almost be a situation where the the lower ranking cubs get dominated early on in life and they learn it very quickly the other side of it is, is often with low ranking females is that they'll actually even den away from the high ranking females they'll use a separate den site have their young ones away to stop that bullying that happens by those cubs from the higher ranking females you can see this little one even though it's just play there will definitely be a situation where Intima will dominate her. That's just from a size point of view. Even if she was a higher ranking individual, Intima would still dominate that little one because of size. But if mom is here and let's say Intima is on from a lower ranking female than the tiny one, then mom would discipline Intima quite quickly and make sure that she knows that she mustn't mess around with that cub. Isn't it sweet to have the two of them? As I was saying just now, though, we are going to have to leave here because we can't stay here in the dark without the mothers and leave them sort of out and about because, well, if anything sees us or hears us and comes to investigate, it would be hate to be the cause of these little guys getting hurt or injured. So we're probably going to leave them shortly and let them carry on on their evening i don't see any sign of the adults i'll do a quick scan around with the lights on our left it's starting to get quite dark and see if there's not any sign of ribbon or any of the others and while we do that let's go across to taylor who's got her own light out and is looking for 